بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده رسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد continuing on with the كتاب الرقاق the book of heart softness from Sahih al Bukhari we read up until pay, uh, chapter number five. And today, inshallah, we start on chapter number six. It says, Babu al Amal al Ladi Yubitaha bihi wajhullah. Chapter The deeds which one he seeks Allah's favor for that. Or the deeds which you do to seek Allah's countenance. He says, Al Imam al Bukhari. حدثنا فيه سعد he says حدثنا معاذ بن أسد أخبرنا عبد الله أخبرنا معمر عن الزهري أخبرني محمود بن الربيع وزعم محمود أنه عقل رسول الله رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال وعقل مجة مجها من دلو كانت في دراهم كان في دارهم عفوا كان في دارهم he says I remember Mahmoud bin Rabi'ah, he says, we went, we went through this hadith, by the way, in the book of knowledge. Remember in the book of knowledge, Kitab al-Ilm, we read the chapter, uh, Sima' al the young person narrating hadith. Remember that chapter? We went through this hadith of Mahmoud bin Rabi'ah, who said what? I remember the, the Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he took water from a bucket, he was drinking in his mouth and then he he poured it on the he sprayed it out on my face and i was he said i was how old then i was seven years old i was seven years old the next hadith imam al-bukhari he says qala sami'tu itban ibn malik al-ansari thumma ahad bani salim qala ghada alayya rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam itban ibn malik he says and he's one of the men of the tribe of Banu Salim. He says that the Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to me. فقال and he said, لن يوافيا عبد يوم القيامة يقول لا إله إلا الله يبتغي به وجه الله إلا حرم الله عليه النار. Anyone who comes on the day of resurrection, on the day of judgment, and he used to say, La ilaha illallah, sincerely, sincerely from his heart with the intention of pleasing Allah, with the intention of pleasing Allah, then this kind of a person, Allah will make the hellfire prohibited for him. He'll never go into the hellfire. The reward for this kind of a person who said, La ilaha illallah, that there's no true God who deserves to be worshipped except Allah. And he used to say it sincerely from his heart. He was a Muslim, he became Muslim not to please people. He is Muslim right now, like me and you, not to please people. We, you tell yourself, my Islam is just to please Allah. That is what it means. Saying La ilaha illallah, saying La ilaha illallah, being a Muslim. And you say, I'm a Muslim sincerely just for Allah, to, to please my Creator Allah. This kind of a person, uh, his reward is that Allah will make the hellfire prohibited for him. And this is eternal success. Eternal success. The next hadith, he says, حدثنا قتيبة, حدثنا يعقوب, عن يعقوب بن إبراهيم بن عبد الرحمن, أنا عمر عن سعيد المقبوري, عن أبي هريرة أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said يقول الله تعالى Allah he says Allah the exalted he says ما لعباد المؤمن عندي جزاء إذا قبضت صفية من أهل الدنيا أو صفيه من أهل الدنيا ثم احتسبه إلا الجنة Allah سبحانه وتعالى he says I have nothing as a reward to give my believing slave 
who I cause one of his dear relatives, one of his close people to die. But then he becomes patient for my sake. His reward is only paradise. His reward is only paradise. Allah says, the reward I have, the only reward for a believing servant of mine who I caused one of his close people to, to die. But then he became patient and he said, this is from Allah. The reward of that kind of a person is paradise. It is paradise. And the key here is what? He became patient for the sake of Allah. Ihtasabahu. I said, as we know, that is why when someone dies, not just when someone dies, when a musibah, when a calamity happens, what do we say? Inna lillahi, we belong to Allah. Wa inna ilayhi raji'un, and we shall return to him. That statement is supposed to make us patient, supposed to make things very easy. We belong to Allah. He does what he wants, because we know whatever he does is good, and fair, and just. Wa inna ilayhi raji'un, and all of us have to go to him anyways. So the one who Allah causes his close one to pass away, and he doesn't become like how some people are, you know, his whole life is shattered and he goes close to kufr. In fact, why me? Why did this happen? You know, and this disbelieving statements people say, oh, he went so early. No, there's nothing like he went early. Everybody has an appointed time. Why did it have to be my? No. Say this is from Allah. That kind of a person, Allah will give him. His only reward is paradise. Paradise. The next hadith, and that is the last hadith of the chapter. So that is the chapter of the actions we do to seek Allah's pleasure. And this is the key to success. And this is the battle which most of us have to fight in. Because Alhamdulillah, most of us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us. But the challenge you have is in being good, lectures like this, praying, giving charity, hajj, umrah, whatever we do, it has to be for Allah only. Otherwise, it's of no benefit. That is the battle we have to fight. What is, who, who are we fighting that battle? First and foremost, your own self and the shaitan, because the shaitan knows. I can't make him not pray. This one I can't make him not pray. But I'll try to corrupt that prayer he prays. Let him pray, but I'll say, you know, make your voice beautiful. So and so is, is listening to you. I say, oh, make sure so and so give, show, uh, uh, make sure, uh, show someone that, uh, you know, you're giving. Let them speak that you, mashallah, you give. He's not stopping you from giving. He's stopping, he's doing what? He's ruining everything. Because the action you do with, not, with no sincerity, it's not for Allah alone. It is invalid. It is nothing. In fact, it's a, a case against you in front of Allah. And that is minus your career, as we know. So this is something extremely important. Extremely important. That is what al-ikhlas, being sincere with Allah. Al uh, uh, doing everything for the sake of Allah. That is why one of the great Imams, one of the Tabi'un, one of the great Imams, he said, I can't remember his name. He said, if I had the ability, listen to these words, if I had the ability, I would put someone in every masjid and his job is just to teach people a niyyah, the right intention. I would put someone in every masjid to teach, not just to teach salah, no. Teaching people about the intention, reminding them about the intention. That is where it all starts. Why are we doing this? Why am I doing this? Is it really for Allah? And if you want to, 
to become better in this you know if you ask how do I check myself how do I know I'm better before you do any action remind yourself this could be my last prayer this could be my last charity I have to do it for Allah while you're doing it remind yourself say why are you doing this if it's not for Allah don't do it remind yourself say I'm doing it for Allah that is one of the best ways to deal with your own self before you do the action and while you're doing the action say to yourself this is for Allah so it is very important working on ourselves working on our intentions that everything we do has to be for the pleasure of Allah and we know there's some actions which you do to please people but the main goal the intended goal is to Allah is to please Allah not end not saying oh I'm, I'm pleasing Allah and doing it for so and so no the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying when one of you does an action he says this is for Allah and so and so it's only for so and so Allah doesn't have a partner but you can do an action where you're pleasing people but you're not doing it for them you know the base fact is not for them it's for who it's for Allah because it's a duty Allah told you, you have to fulfill am I being clear let me give an example pleasing your parents taking care of your family you do that we do that almost routinely you know it's just part of our nature now if you do it for them you know it's just them then you're doing it wrong you're doing it wrong but if you're doing it because you're saying Allah my Lord told me I have to take care of my parents so you say ma today you know I'll, I'll buy you this and this to make you happy she'll become happy right or wrong but are you doing it per se for her it's not for her it's for who it's for Allah is it clearer if you understand so everything we do has to be for Allah if you want to be rewarded if you want to be successful if you want to be successful And all of us know the hadith the Prophet said, Innam al a'malu bin niyat, wa innam al kullim ri'in manawa. Actions are only considered by their intentions. And everyone will only be rewarded by the intentions they had for those specific actions. And that is when the Prophet made a very good example. He said what? فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ So whoever migrated, we discussed hijrah last, last lecture, or during, sorry, the Q&A on Sunday. He migrated, he left his place, he migrated, moving to another place. فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ He did it for Allah and to help Allah's Messenger. And as we said before, Hijrah used to be a must before for them. Everybody had to go to Medina to support Allah and to support His Messenger. For Hijrah to Allah Rasul, then that kind of a person, he, that's his Hijrah, that's his reward. But whoever migrated to get a piece of the worldly fortunes, or he migrated to, for the sake of getting married, then his intention he'll be rewarded for that is it sinful for me to say I'm going to travel to somewhere to get married to this woman it's not sinful but are you same as this as the one who said I'm migrating from this place going to the same place but I'm doing it for Allah because here I cannot be a good Muslim here so me and you two people one left this country called X, he went to the country called Y. One said, because there's a sister they want to get married to. The sister said, there's a brother I want to get married to. Is it haram? It's not haram. Or the other one he left, he said, it's for business. It's good business opportunities. So he did all this effort going there. It's not haram. But the other one, he's leaving country X, because he can't even pray Jum'ah in X. 
He's missing even Juma. His children are getting lost. So he says, I'm going to migrate, do hijrah for the sake of Allah, to preserve my religion, to country Y. They're both going to Y, country called Y. But the answer is, why is he doing it and why is he doing it? His is for Allah, his is not for Allah. Same action, but different rewards. Different rewards. So the intention is very, very important. It is very important. And the believer, al muwaffaq the one who Allah has guided him to what is correct, is the one who always reminds and checks his own heart. That is why we keep saying, Ikhwani, everybody should have time for themselves. Don't just worry about other people. Take time and look at yourself. Where is my Iman right now? What is my standing? You know? What, how, how am I doing? This is very important. Everybody needs that alone time sometimes. The next chapter. And of course, you also read the hadith, Yarhamkallah. We also read the hadith. Um, we read the hadith in the last portions of Kitab al Ilm. In the last parts of the book of knowledge, which we read in Sahih Bukhari last few weeks ago, when the man came to the Prophet وسلم, and he said, One of us, he fights Hamiya. He just fights for vigor and to show off. Hamiya, we can say, he fights for his tribal pride. And one of us, he fights. Shaja'a, to show that he's, he's a fighter, he's brave. Which of these is the one which is called, he is fighting for Allah? And the Prophet Sallallahu said what? Man qatala litakuna kalimatullahi hiya al-uliya. Kalimatullahi hiya al-uliya. Whoever fights so that the word of Allah, la ilaha illallah, is supreme, is superior. Then that is the one who's fighting for Allah. So they're all in the same army, fighting the same fight. Yet, one of them is up there because his intention is just for Allah. The other one is down there. He's just showing off. He's just showing off. The intention is very important. The niyyah, al-ikhlas, being sincere with Allah. Being sincere with Allah. And we have to love Allah. If you want to be sincere with Allah, you have to love Allah. And if you want to know, and loving Allah is the, is the thing which drives everything else. Ibadah, worshipping Allah, ibadah, worshipping Allah, worshipping Allah can only be ibadah worshipping if it is done through love. Why should we love Allah? Just look at yourself and that is enough answer why you should love Allah. Before you mention anything else, look at yourself, then you know why you should love Allah. The fact that you can breathe, you can walk, you can sleep, you can eat by yourself, that is enough. The fact that we have shelters, alhamdulillah, very good houses, homes to live in, that is enough. The fact that we have food at our disposal any time we want, in fact, we have lots of it, that is enough. The fact we have water, free running, any time you want, hot or cold, in fact. Everywhere in your house, kitchen and washroom, alhamdulillah. And I think most of us are immigrants we can relate to that or some of us maybe you're not an immigrant you have family somewhere where people don't have these luxuries that is why we should love Allah and we can continue on and on and on and on when you love Allah you'll know okay I need to worship Allah then or does Allah ask of us just to worship him but that worship has to be done that is why you do it sincerely say it only for Allah 
Only for Allah. That is why to the point Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim, Rahimullah, he went to the point when he was discussing the prayer, when he was just discussing the prayer, and the importance of khushu'. Concentration, being humble, lowering yourself, being in the prayer, being in the prayer, you, you're doing it for Allah, you're praying, you're worshipping. He said those people, there's different kinds of people. There are those people who, they do it and they're thinking of other people or other things during the prayer. I'm just mentioning this one part, he said a long thing. He said those people, maybe it has reached, they're taking those people as their gods now. They're not taking them as their gods, but if you know that my God is only one God, Allah, then why at this, at this particular time, five, seven, ten minutes, say you pray in ten minutes, your salah is very long, why is it that you are focused on these other people and not Allah? It tells you the priorities of your heart. It tells you who do you love more. This is what he is saying. So it is as if they have taken those other people as their gods. Because the one who knows my Lord is only Allah and he really loves Allah, he knows this is the time I am worshipping Allah. This is the time for Allah. So, loving Allah, loving Allah is the key to ikhlas, to being sincere with Allah. Because you'll only serve someone Servitude, ibadah, that's what we call, that's what all of us are, ibadullah, ibadur rahman, the servants of Allah, servants of Rahman. If you feel you're being forced, everybody knows that feeling maybe, or you can understand it. You think you'll be a good servant? If you feel, I don't have to do this. Why? Because you don't know who you are. So I said, just look at yourself, you'll know why you need to worship Allah and to thank Him. Look at yourself. Where did you come, human being? Where did you come? Where you come from, sorry. Where did you come from? Allah says, Mimmani in Yumna. Weak water. Allah brought you now today. You are who you are. Now you want to contest with Allah. Now you want to say, No, I don't have to worship. Subhanallah. Now the human being reaches that point. So, when you realize who you are, and if you read the Quran on a constant basis, you'll get the answers to this. Not just who you are, where you come from, where are you going? Ask yourself, one of the keys also to get ikhlas, to be sincere with Allah, that everything you do is for Allah, ask yourself, where am I going? One day everybody will die. Then what next? The only thing which matters out there, up there, is what you did for Allah. So if you want to gain ikhlas, how do I get ikhlas? How do I become sincere with Allah? How do I let my actions, I'm saying all of this is just for Allah. Remind yourself also, who controls and is the owner of paradise, eternal success? And who is the controller and the owner of hellfire, eternal damnation. Who? Who? Allah. Okay then, so let's just focus on Allah. Let's just focus on Allah. And that is how you understand the hadith when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, how do we focus on our prayer? He said what? Remember death. Remember death. When you remember death, you know where you're going. When you know where you're going, what are you taking there with you? If you decide to take nothing, okay, that's you, but you'll pay for it. If you want to take something for with you, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا The last verse of Surah Al-Kahf, that is why you read Surah Al-Kahf every Friday, every week to remind yourself. Allah says, so whoever has hope, if you have hope, huh? in what? In the day you'll meet your Lord. 
You have hope in the meeting of your Lord. I want that day. I'll have hope. Just hope. If you have hope, Allah says, فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا Then do good actions. But those actions have to be based on what? وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Don't put anyone else as your intention, as your goal to please. Anyone else, don't put. If you do that, then you have hope with the meeting of Allah. Showing us, my brothers and sisters who are listening, that hope in Islam is not just saying, I have hope, I wish. No. Hope is doing. When you do good actions, you pray, you give charity, you work for da'wah, you listen to lectures, you study, you do, you do, you do. That shows you have hope. Otherwise, you're just wishful thinking. It's just wishful thinking. Amali, in Arabic, is called amali. Things which, which will bring nothing. Nothing. The one who has hope in the meeting of his Lord, then let him do good actions. But a good action, Allah says, don't associate anyone with Allah. Don't associate anyone with Allah. This is how you bring about ikhlas. This is how you bring about yourself to become closer to Allah. And that is the secret also. And that is the secret also why so many of the actions in Islam, they're strongly recommended to be done in private. Why? That's a good check. That's a good test. It's a good examination. Are you doing it for Allah or not? Do you love Allah or not? You have hope in Allah or not? Because now nobody is watching. Nobody is seeing. Nobody can praise you. Nobody will talk about you. If you in your heart, you know, I'm just doing for Allah, you enjoy that moment. You say, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. But if you want to know that your heart is infected, because this is one of the diseases of the heart, showing off, then you'll see that you can't pray by yourself. Not because you don't know, no, because you don't, you don't enjoy it. You just want to be around people. You can't read Quran by yourself. Anything else, you don't do any good by yourself. Not because you can't, like physically or is no. It's because your heart says you have to be. You have to show people. You know that your heart is sick. You know, you know, you know, you know that you're not on the right path. You're not. That is why the Prophet sallallahu said what? The best prayer of the person is what? The best prayer is the prayer you pray by yourself. إِلَّا الْمَكْتُوبَ Except the obligatory prayers, five obligatory prayers, the man have to pray in the masjid. That's it. But every other prayer, pray at home by yourself. Except the congregational prayers. Five daily prayers, you know, Eid, Jumu'ah, but all the nawafil, what we call sunnah prayers, after these daily prayers, they're supposed to be prayed at home. And the Prophet ﷺ said, they have 20 times better reward if you pray at home. Just like praying in congregation, the fard, Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, and Isha, is 25 times better than just praying by yourself. Praying your nafila, your sunnah prayer, your voluntary prayer, is 25 times better prayed at home than in the masjid, in front of people. That is why the prayer of the woman, uh, the prayer in her, live, in, her, in, her, in her living room, the common area of the room, is not as good as the prayer she prays in the living room. The prayer she prays in her bedroom, just by herself, is the best prayer than she prays in the common room, in the houses. Why? You are by yourself, you and Allah. You and Allah. Allah says about charity now. In tubdu sadaqati, huh? Fanimma here. If you show your charity, you give. You know, I'm doing for Allah. Even if you do it in public, that is good. Wa in tuhfuha tu tuhal fuqara. But if you hide your charity and you give it to the poor ones, 
it is better for you. This one is good. This one, this one is better for you. It's better for you. That is why one of those seven people will have the shade. The day there will be no shade. When the sun is one mile away, uh, and people are drenching in their, drowning in their sweat. <coughs> one of those people who will have the shed is who? Someone who used to give such that his left hand does not know what his right hand gave. It means one of the meanings is in secret. It's so secret that even his left hand doesn't know, let alone other people. He gives in secret. The believer has to be like that. You know, we have to build our relationship with Allah. This is how you get close to Allah. We'll stop here today. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cleanse our hearts and to make us from the best of His slaves, inshaAllah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik shalallahu ilaha anta astaghfiruk wa tubalik.